efforts to repeat. Tonight, live from the Civic Center in Peoria, Illinois, it's game one of the 1991-92 IHL quarterfinal as the San Diego Gulls meet the Peoria Rivermen. Tonight's special sports broadcast of the San Diego Gulls hockey is brought to you by Valvoline Motor Oil. The next time you get your oil changed, ask for Valvoline Motor Oil. And by U.S. Air. Now with five daily nonstops to San Francisco, U.S. Air, we're here for you. By Caliente Race and Sportsbook, with over 23 locations throughout Mexico, bringing race and sports fans the only place where you can watch and wager legally. Arnold's Home Furnishing, Arnold's Thomasville Galleries, and Arnold's for Kids and Teens, Gurney Mesa, San Marcos, and Chula Vista, plus Arnold's Clearance Center on Miramar Road. By Waterbed Emporium, with seven convenient locations, San Diego County showrooms featuring 15 unique beds under $2.99 and easy financing. By Shelves and Cabinets Unlimited, largest selection, lowest prices on... We are in the heart of downtown Peoria, Illinois. We're on this side of the Illinois River. The Catter Miller men are on strike, and here in the Peoria Civic Center, the Rivermen are set to strike. Good evening, every. Buddy, hockey fans from coast to coast, this is Ron Oaks with Sandy Fitzpatrick. Fans are ready, and I hope you are too. This is Ron Oaks with Sandy Fitzpatrick. We get an opening face-off, and the puck is sent up into the Peoria zone. Loose at center ice, Dmitry Kvartalnov slaps it in behind the Peoria net. Race to the puck, and a hard collision on the backboards. Over in the corner to the left of goaltender Guy Hebert. They send it up the ice and into the middle zone. Ackborn with the puck, watched by Ruff. Quick pass, far side. Kavartlinov breaking through the uh, zone, but he was checked. Shot from the point, blocked on the way to the net. Let go by Heppel. They battle for the puck. Out the right side, Ruff. Ruff in the middle to Manjo. Manjo picking his way and drop pass for Ruff. Turns to the net, shoots, and that was blocked as it hit toward Cerny. Over in the far side, center right in front, and a great chance there for Steve Peddle. 43 goal scoring forward for Peoria. In behind the San Diego net. Far side, Heppel drives it up off a leg. That should be offside, and it is called Sandy Fitzpatrick. Play whistle down. Well, the goal starting tonight with Ford Cernich and Alan Heppel on defense, knowing that probably the Monjo line would start for Peoria. I think Don Waddell may match up that defense pair at least against the Monjo line. He may not match lines per se, but I think you'll see Heppel and Cernich on the ice every time the Monjo line is out to try to neutralize that high-powered line. Taking a look at the San Diego bench, Martinson in the middle, Lambert to his left or to your viewing right. Base off outside the San Diego blue line, and it is Whitney between uh, Duguay and on the far side, Jason Simon. Puck driven in, Eber with an easy stop. Second minute of first period play. Over in the corner, Peoria zone, a left wing pass on the board, shot into center ice by Richard Peon on the ice right now. The drive into the San Diego zone, wide of the net by Kevin Meehan. Gulls clear it. Shoe bottom chased after it with Whitney in pursuit. Quick two gay pass, left side, Simon drops, closing Whitney, coming right out in front and on goal gets that shoot, and Hebert comes up big. And Duguay right behind him. A great, glorious chance for Whitney, who worked himself right in on top of the goal. Chases back near the blue line to get the puck. Slapped behind the Peoria net. Battle on the near board. Shot around in the far side, out near the line, and bang, in the center ice. Now picked up by the Riverman. Down the far side, Peon drives it in, and the Riverman make a change. In behind his own net core, uh, Sergei Starikov, rather, passed it up towards Lambert, broken up, taken by Monjo, right back on the ice. Nice poke check, takes it away from him. Gretzky crossing center ice, drives it in wide of the net, went chasing out a bear after that puck. Slapped around on the far side by McKee, and a puck it up out in center ice. Recovered by Monjo, closing toward the net, stops, try to pass for Ruff, was blocked. Far side boards. Sent in behind the San Diego net, rough center, right in front. And another drive by Monjo over top after Sean Burkett made the initial stop. Good scoring chances at both nets already. 
Buck rolled out into center ice, recovered by Darcy Norton. Stops as he was watched by McKee and sent it into the Peoria corner. Almost to the three minute mark and still no score, but some great chances. Sent down the far side, that'll not be icing. Larry Floyd is on. Both teams making changes. Out the left side to Captain Allen Heppel. Rink wide pass to Whitney, over skated. Recovered in the neutral zone by Hoover. To a pass and right side drive over top of the net by Brian Pellerin. Kept in, some pressure now by Peoria. Coming out of the corner, working with a puck, Hoover. Broken up a backhander, easy save for Burke. Long period without a whistle. Steve Martinson's pass was behind Whitney, but recovered by Larry Floyd, winds up, shoots right on. That is turned aside by, Ber by uh, goal, goal, goaltender D.A. Bear. Ron Hoover, far side. Blocked there, Pellerin takes it. Working to the line. Flip to lead pass. On comes Peoria down the far board in the San Diego zone and a hard check. Still with it, coming out in front and shooting was defenseman Jason Marshall. Going to be a delayed penalty. Sean Burke started toward the bench, so did the other goaltender, Hebert, but referee Derek Martin is making his first call here at four minutes, four seconds. Jason Marshall. Well, Marshall, two minutes for high sticking right up in front of the San Diego goal. So Marshall up there on the attack ended up uh, getting the stick a little high. The goals go on the first power play of the series. Asa to mention that this is a simulcast. So when I say you're looking, of course, for the benefit of the television viewer. Long right wing pass at center ice Hackborn. Gulls power play, it's been effective. Coming from the side, Kabartilov. Special K around the net. Into the corner, drops to the line. Larry Floyd over the far side, Hackborn top of the circle. Looking for Kabartilov, goes to Floyd instead, back Hackborn, top of the circle, down low, Kabartilov, they change off, back to the line, Floyd across, and the drive by Derek Mayer, turned away. Hackborn giving it to Robbie Nichols. Two-thirds of that hot line, along with Kabartilov, line drive, right on, rebound, backhanded by Nichols, past the net, and cleared down the ice. Sandy uh, thought it hit the post. I didn't get that good of a look at it. But we'll take your word for it. You're a few years younger than I. <laughs> Whitney out the left side. Stopped at the Peoria blue line. Batted ahead by defenseman Randy Scarta. And then sent into the San Diego zone by Hoover. 50 seconds left in the penalty. No score. Six minute first period play. Left wing pass Darcy Norton. Gulls have a line change on. Here comes Dugan, that long pass. A hard drive off the post. A second post outside of it, but nevertheless hit the iron. Battle in the corner, and it is ice all the way down, and Sean Burke has the save. Well, Burke in his first game against the Peoria Rivermen of the season. Set back into the Peoria zone. Battle in the corner to the left, set to the blue line. Ray Whitney chips out the left side is Peon. Breaking to the net, gets that shoot. Burke turns that away. Loose puck in front. Down goes Burke on top of the puck. Well, the goals, I'm sure, getting a little nervous on that play as Peon broke away. He had a bad angle. Nonetheless, it was a scoring opportunity, and the goals have given up 19 shorthanded goals on the season that, uh, that led the IHL. As we look at uh, Sean Burke down there, I don't know whether Burke would be uh, any more nervous in this game than any other. He's played in some uh, pretty high-powered games. Burke, he certainly seems ready today, he seemed pretty relaxed. 14 minutes, three seconds left, first period play. A couple of good chances by the Gulls, a couple of posts, but only seven seconds now remaining in the penalty to Marshall. Face off to Burke's right. Dion on the draw against Gretzky, and the Gulls win it. Back of the net court, Cerny. Starts out left side pass. On comes Alan Heppel, winds up. Penalty has expired. Puck driven in wide of the Peoria net. Shoebottom races around his own goal. Turned around and spilled out in the center ice area by Simon. Overskated by Lambert near the Peoria blue line. Out the left side for Eva Root. Burke stops it near his own net. Alan Heppel holding there as the Gulls head up the ice. Lead pass tipped by Lambert for Gretzky. Had to come back for it. Drops it back into his own zone. 
Right wing pass to Cerny. Lead to Simon. Check, recovered. And Lambert in over the blue line. The goal's rookie. Takes a drive as he fell wide of the Peoria net. Robinson chased around and checked by Gretzky. Gretzky behind the net trying to come out in front. Boss control of the puck. Kevin Meehan starts back. Meehan a right wing feet. In over the line. The shot. Easy save for Sean Burke. As play is whistled down. And with the game scoreless, we'll return right after this. Snips. Well, Harold, quite a guy. He's got a great background in uh, the National Hockey League, of course. His first year of coaching, however, and he's brought this team along very well this season. Played over a 1,000 games in the National Hockey League, and his bosses are here tonight. Ron Caron, the general manager of the St. Louis Blues. Ryan Sutter, the coach of the Blues. They get a ball start and a face-off there, though the whistle... Uh, I think the P got stuck in its end. <laughs> May have. I noticed uh, Bobby Plager of the Blues, uh, last year's coach here, of course, that took the Rivermen to the Turner Cup Championship. He's in attendance here, and as uh, manager direct or director of player personnel for St. Louis, of course, he's here to watch this hockey game. The two uh, hot lines, as it were, for both teams on the ice right now, the goal's officially a hot line, and it's the Monjo line out there for Peoria. Buck slapped down the far boards. Robinson races back. San Diego will be called for icing at 7-13. Well, this is one of the matchups that we've been looking for in this series, the Mongeau line versus the Hackborn line. It could very well determine the series, uh, whichever team comes out best. Uh, we talk about, talk about the high-powered forward lines. Uh, we've got Guy Bear at one end, uh, Sean Burke at the other end, a couple of National Hockey League goaltenders. So, the clash between these high-powered offenses and uh, these two very strong goaltenders will be interesting to see how it gets resolved. From the face-off, behind his own net, Al Leggett, who uh, we thought might have been the odd man out tonight after the way practice was conducted this morning, is in the lineup. Von Joe at center ice. Starikoff overskating the puck. It changes hands there frequently. Monjo tried to bring it in. Now he did slip it to Ruff. The rookie winds up. Hard shot turned away by Sean Burke. Got the blocking glove on that. Stops it coming back of his own goal once more. Slips to the other side. Starikov takes over. Lead pass. Hackborn tipped it as he was run off by Dominic Lavoie. Hard chase. Goaltender Guillebert had to play that. Or Gulls would have been in there first. Hackborn was up in front. Lead pass. Monjo. Center right, blue line, offside. Close call at the San Diego blue line. Well, although the Peoria Rivermen lost a lot of goals in losing some of their best skaters from last year, Emerson, Bruce, Tomlinson, they have replaced them with some equally strong players this year and kept up that scoring pace. The goals with the highest number of goals per year as we look at uh, general manager coach Don Waddell who's of course greatly responsible for that production as he's put these forward lines together particularly that hot line the hack forward line I'd like to apologize for some technical problems on the radio side of our broadcast on KSDO but we welcome all those listeners as they join us here at the Civic Center in Peoria Ron Oaks with Sandy Fitzpatrick no score early in the contest out at center ice broken up as Bassin tried to break in. Mayer heads back for the goal. Winds up hard, low shot, high to the net. Martinson over skate. Duque gets it. Martinson from the side to the right point, and it was too high to handle for Derek Mayer. Angles all the way to the San Diego net. In behind. Shot around to the far boards and out into center ice by Heppel. Dumped back in by Marshall. Taken behind his own net by the goal's captain. Out of the Toronto, Ontario area, we welcome all of our satellite viewers as well as our cable viewers, wherever they might be. Whitney upended in center ice in a collision with Hoover. No call by referee Derek Martin. Buck slides down to the San Diego blue line. Pass the head taken by Derek Frenette. Shoe bottom takes over. He comes to the red line, drives it in wide of the San Diego net. Burke takes it there. Heppel passed it off to Darcy Norton. Watched by Peon. Stole it. Shot wide. Great chance. Point blank. Missed by Peon. Goes to the line. McKee shoots. And a turn away there by Burke again. That turnover almost cost the goal. Now a pass picked off in return by Darcy Norton. Slaps it off the boards into center right. Left there. Quick pass. If uh, Cernich had been able to get that to Gretzky, 
He'd have been breaking in alone on goal. Far side board. Peoria zone. Battle in the corner to the left. Almost to the midway point of the period and no score. First game, best of seven. First game in San Diego this Saturday night. Left side for McKee. Broken up. Goes head in. Lambert offside. Garcia touched ahead of the play. With the game scored, we'll be returning to the Civic Center right after this match. Spring has... Play underway as we return you to the here in the Civic Center. Game scoreless. Racing after that loose puck. Nickel alone. Oh, Kavarnilov gets that shoot and the save as he faded to his left. Big, big save. Back come the Rivermen. Puck tipped high off the glass into the San Diego corner. Can't believe the chances that these two clubs have had and been denied. Now Hackborn lead pass. Out they come, Mayer, trying to break Cavardell off again. He was by Robinson, but the pass off the mark. Tipped behind the net by Lavoie. Back of the Peoria net. Shot over to Ruff. Ruff a lead pass. Covered now up to Monjo. San Diego blue line offside. Peoria. What an opportunity for Cavardell now. Well, we've often said, why don't they use Cavardell now in shootouts? He doesn't do well on those breakaways. He walked in alone. I think Kavardinov may have the best shot on this hockey team, but he elected to try to deke Guy Bear. As you'll see, uh, right down the middle, beautiful position. Stick handles to his forehand side. Bear went with him and just managed to get the gloves over as his outstretched body across the goal crease and blocked the shot. He's had two glorious chances at least in this period already with still over nine minutes to play. Well, he's the man the Gulls are certainly looking for some for some offense. Basson, Pellerin, Hoover, the front line now against the Whitney Duque. Simon combination for San Diego. On the far board, Simon sends it ahead for intended, at least for Whitney, broken up. Heading back in now is Basson. Basson out in front, but spun around in the play and off the puck, the uh, forward, Brian Pellerin. On the right boards, it is Duque with the puck. Starts out of his own zone. Now center ice, a feed for Simon. Can't reach that. Shoe bottom. Goes back to tie it up. Sends around on the far boards, and it is dumped into center ice. They've got a two-on-one, unless Duque can get back. Closing the drive, kicks a rebound. Saved by Sean Burke. A equally fantastic chance for Ron Hoover. Well, Hoover had that rebound all to himself. He had really the whole net. I think the, the shot went off the heel of his stick just a little bit there as Basson's shot was saved by Burke, but he had to make that wide stride to make the kick save. The rebound coming in underneath his arms as Hoover misplayed the puck, but just went off the heel of his stick. A big break for Sean Burke. Face off will be to the right of Burke. We're keeping it, claims the locals, who have about half filled the Civic Center tonight. I think the Gulls will probably do much better than that. They've already sold more tickets than that for Friday night's game three. A drive by McKee, turned away by Burke. Out comes Larry Floyd. He's on with Martinson and Hackborn. The drive turned away. Left side in the zone, Brian McKee. Pickoff. But Hackborn can't get by the checkers. And heading back is Kevin Meehan. Winds up too high over top of the net. 74-point score for the Rivermen this season. Kept in on the far boards. Backboard, Sergei Starikov. Lifts it up the left side. It is now spinning into the Peoria zone. Taken back of his own net by Brian McKee. He's watched in front by Martinson, Hackborn, and company. Pass dumped up into the middle. Just a clearing shot. Starikov turns in his own blue line. Over to Larry Floyd. Lead pass, Hackborn can't retrieve it, McKee does. Bats it ahead, it's whacked into the zone by Eva Root. Changes for both teams beginning. Full scale for Peoria. Rink wide pass to the open wing for Steve Martinson. Was checked there. Buck shot ahead by Steve Tuttle. Gretzky tied up as he crossed the blue line by Dominic Lavoie. Down the far side of the San Diego zone, Rob Robinson. Squeezed off by Darcy Norton. Buck shot over to the boards. Gretzky had it bounce off him. Comes back to recover. Put on the brakes near his own net. Forced to go the other way with Tuttle right after him. Gave it to Derek Mayer. Mayer starts out slowly. By one check on Joe. Center ice. Mayer 
still has it. He has a good shot. Can't get room to let it go. And it was knocked off his stick. Crowd getting upset on a check on one of their Peoria players. At center ice, Robinson. Lead pass, Von Joe. Off the right board, stops. They're sticking to him like glue. The title knocked off his stick. Now we get a stop in play behind the action. Going to be a penalty. Game scoreless. Gull's about to go a man short. We'll return right after this. A penalty box for the next two minutes. As Keith Gretzky is going to sit it out two minutes for slashing. The time of this penalty is 13.25 of the first period. So the Rivermen, number one in the league on the power play, go on the power play now. Goes second in penalty killing by just uh, two tenths of a point. Here's a drive. Good save by Burke on a Whistler by Kevin Meehan. Well, Burke ready for that. Out on top of his goal crease where he could get a good view of that. They don't take a lot of shots from the point on their power play, certainly. In fact, the Peoria Rivermen's best power play is one that they work down low. And we'll see it, I'm sure, here because they use it almost, almost exclusively. And it's worked, obviously, very well for them. Face off to the left of Burke between uh, Monjo. It's kicked to the line as uh, Larry Floyd went down, kept in down low in the corner. Back to the point. Here's the drive deflected on the way to the net. Let go by Kevin Meehan. Out of the right side, Lavoy shoots into a crowd off the glove of teammate Jason Ruff. Back to the line, Monjo across Lavoy. Hard drive blocked by Burke. Centering cry, loose puck, bang that. It's underneath Burke. And a battle begins. And then stops just as quickly in front of Sean Burke. Well, Tuttle talking to referee Derek Mayer there. Anyone who goes around the front of the goal has to expect they're going to take some punishment. So I don't think uh, Tuttle has, should have much to complain about. Uh, you're going to draw a lot of attention when you go there. The shot by Lavoie up a little bit high. You'll get a talking to from some of the forwards. The pass across, Lavoie just taking it and one timing the shot. Rebound. Right on the doorstep, Tuttle hanging around there looking for it. Uh, had a little poke at it before it could be covered by Sean Burke. And then, of course, he drew a crowd. Still a minute and 25 seconds left in Gretzky's penalty. Sean Burke, late of the Canadian Olympic team, signed in a dramatic signing by new Gulls owner, Fred Comrie. Face off again to Burke's right. Monjo got it back. Lavoie winds up, shoots down, dropping down low and turning it away again. Burke Ruff charges after it. Monjo center deflected to Gulls court. Cerny lead pass. The leading goal scorer shorthanded. Robbie Nichols. Long drive, and that is caught and held by Guy Bear. Well, after I mentioned how Peoria works down low on their power play, I think Lavoie has taken three shots already. Now, uh, Lavoie with uh, 20 goals just set a franchise record this season. Six short-handed goals for Robbie Nichols. There's Robbie out there now with still a minute and 10 remaining in this penalty. As Ron already mentioned, the Gulls penalty killer is second in the league, killing off 83.2% of their opportunities. But Robbie with the six short-handed goals, also a, a plus 28 for the season. Up there in a battle for the league lead in that department all year long. And all our Ontario viewers are probably glued to the set. More than five times as many points this season as all of last year, playing on that hot line, centered by Hackborn. And Dimitri Kavardinoff on the wing. Hoover looking in against Dugay for the faceoff. Goaltenders left. Will draw one by Peoria. Puck dumped up into center right. Out of the net, Burke. As Heppel comes back, Burke elects to shoot it. It hit the oncoming player, but it's driven away down the length of the ice. Hebert came out of the net. Hebert, 36 games in the net this season for Peoria, but a lot of time, I believe 12 games with St. Louis. Into the San Diego corner. Puck comes loose behind the net. Heppel slaps it off the glass down the length of the ice as that penalty ticks away. Hebert gave the puck to McKee. Out they come. Pass in center ice, left for Monjo, steps over the line, outside drive, Rob, excuse me, by Hoover, blocked on the way to the net. Gordon went after the pack, but it was centered from the back of the net. Now Peon works to the far corner. Derek Martin has to jump out of the way once, did the second time, centering pass, Carter winds up, shoot, and that hit a skate on the way to the net, and the goal, Larry Floyd clears it. Penalty coming up. 
do. Fiore as Heppel and Aru have words in the center ice area. Well, Heppel just doing his job, keeping Aru nicely tied up. Aru took exception to a little hold and slashed him back. Well, we're going to come right back. The game is scoreless. See you in just a moment. Just six seconds left in the Gulls penalty, and a two-minuter just called. Yves Zirou gets a two-minute slashing minor at 15.20 of the first period. Face off at center ice between uh, Hackborn and Basson. Basson winning the draw. Down the right side, it is driven into the San Diego zone. Out on the left side, here's a drive by Robinson, turned away by goaltender Sean Burke. Penalty to the Gulls is up, and they have a man advantage in 144 seconds left in it. No score. Out of his own zone comes Derek Mayer. Center ice. Down to the blue line. Cuts wide. Was checked there. And the battle for it. Mayer recovered the puck as he came back out of the zone in the center ice. Now gave it to Whitney. Whitney playing one of the point positions. Hackborn, Kavartelnoff, and Nichols the hot line. Now Kavartelnoff, quick pass. Hackborn steps over the blue line. Stops at the right board. Hackborn rink wide pass for Mayer. Watch. There by Peon. Rink wide pass. Hackborn at the edge of the circle. Looking uh, to Robinson, passes down low to Kavartelnoff, back to Hackborn. There is a 106 left in the penalty, just saved by Hackborn after having it blocked. Gets it back for Kavartelnoff. Over, now cross ice, a drive at the short drive was turned away. Nichols was flat as he uh, guarded the net. Down the middle, racing it across the line is beyond the shot, turned away. Rebound missed by Bassett. Heading back, Hackborn. 41 seconds left in the penalty. Offside, San Diego has play his whistle. 319 left in the period. Well, the Gulls again getting a little bit of trouble on the power play as Beon, for the second time this period, gets a scoring chance, and Basson just missed on the rebound. Beon going down on Sean Burke's right side, getting the shot off, the, pat, the rebound, jumping over Basson's stick as Sean Burke uh, heaves a sigh of relief. 39 seconds left in the penalty. Eva Root. Duque now out between Martinson and Darcy Norton. Face off at the area blue line. Taking the draw for them will be Ron Hoover. The puck is won by Hoover. Sent it back and driven down the ice by Jason Marshall. But it clears the boards and goes into the penalty box right where the penalized player, Eva Rue, is sitting. You know, the goals had that... Uh, as we look at uh, Harold Snaps on the bench there, working that gum pretty hard there. He has to be pretty satisfied with his uh, penalty killing so far. Uh, we had a, a, a post shot there earlier in the, the first Gulls power play, but... Grand mustache sports. <laughs> Almost that uh, Raleigh fingers. Got more down there than uh, certain parts on the top of the head. Face off will be to the goaltender's right, Ron Duguay, the great veteran. Scored a lot of goals in the National Hockey League. Taking the face off against Ron Hoover. And it is shot into the corner now. A pass towards Martinson by Duque. Martinson had it blocked in front of him. They chase around. Hoover backhands the puck out of the zone. 20 seconds left in the penalty. No score. Great chances, but the goaltending has been excellent. Darcy Norton play is offside. Martinson, I believe, was a half stride or a skate stride ahead. What happened there was Ron Duguay was straddling the blue line, was bumped, lost his balance, and he lifted up that back skate. So he didn't have contact with the line or the other side of the line. As we watch Darcy Norton uh, going to the bench there. Darcy, who had a great uh, second half of the season, was up. playing very strong, very tough forward, maybe their best hitting forward on the team, and they need that in this series. They need to be bodying continually in the series slow down this Peoria defense. Peoria defense picked up 61 goals this season. They like to lug the puck. He's finishing strong is now up to 19 goals. Ronnie Duguay with a puck in over the blue line. Left it there for the point man. Leg it across to Starkov. Shoot! Doing the split. He bare, but the puck was wide of the net. 2.40 to play in the period. Another shot. A slider wide of the target. Behind the goal. Bumping session there against Simon. Picked off. Whitney Kurt shoots. Kick save. Rebound. Leg it right on high. Rebound. Well, Jason Simon trying to bang away at it there on the left wing side. He didn't realize that Ray Whitney was parked on the other side of the net if he could have slid the puck across, but a lot of action coming off that point shot. 
So he was just trying to jam it by Iber. He had one shot at it. The rebound came right back. He banged at it again. Ray Whitney parked right over on the far side of the net. Not noticed at all by Jason. In 12 games, Bear was 4-5-1 and, and a GA of 2.92 with the St. Louis Blues this season. Riverman goalie. Face off to his right. Taken back of the goal by Randy Scarda. Check there. Gets help. Round on the far side. Ron Hoover jams the puck out into center ice. It's sailing the length of the ice. And it is picked up by Starikov. Over to the boards. Pinching in was uh, Scarda, but it is picked off. And the goal Dal Leggett. Defenseman from Wainwright, Alberta. Long drive and out on the head of the crease. Hebert makes the save. Under two minutes now to play in the period. Shot back into the Peoria zone by Starikov. Covered by Skarda. Watched by Whitney. Shot it to the line. A bumping session. Whitney got in there, but helped. Blocked by the Gulls point man Leggett as Pellerin tried to clear. Taken behind his own net by McKee. Brian McKee left wing pass. Hoover in center ice, a lead pass. Lambert blocked him off. Lays there, Skarda gets it. Over on the right boards, coming in with a puck. Pellerin passes it off. Getting set, a shot scores! Ryan McKee. signaled by the riverboat horn at 18.33. Well, McKee following up on the play, an excellent play by him. It looked uh, like a pretty harmless play. It looked like only a three-on-three three as we just see the end of that shot. McKee with 15 goals in the regular season doesn't mind rushing up ice. That Willowdale native picking up his first playoff goal. Well, the goals come right back and Darcy Norton shot. Meantime, an injured player in the corner is their youngster, Jason Marshall. Marshall, a rookie out of Kelowna, British Columbia. Played with Lethbridge, uh, excuse me, with Prince Albert. That goal by McKee, his first playoff goal, of course, the assists to Mark Basson and to Brian Pellerin. The time of the goal, 1833. Just in case there's some folks listening up in the Cranbrook, British Columbia area, I've got his hometown right now. That's where he's from, Cranbrook. Jason Marshall, 6'2", 185 pounder, 21 years old, excellent skater. He's being attended to right now by the trainer. Well, they have a couple of BC hockey players on this team. Here we see that the goal once again as the pass across to McKee coming late on the play. You can see Ray Whitney trying to catch up. He, uh, he smelled out the play and he hustled through center ice to try to catch McKee, who was the first fourth riverman inside the San Diego zone. Mark Basson with a real heads up play, passing to that late man coming into the zone for the shot. There were five players screening off the goaltender at the time. He didn't have much chance on it. He played last season at Fort Wayne. Well, they've done all right too. Won the East Division Championship. 1-0, so the Rivermen have the jump goal. 1-10 to play in the first period. Left side cleared out of the zone. Cerning knocked down by Peon as he cleared it. Now shoe bottom, San Diego blue line offside on the near side here, Kevin Mead. Well, we were watching for some kind of matchups during this first period. We really see, haven't seen much of a matchup during the period at all. Now, of course, you have to remember that Don Waddell is working with five defensemen. He's rotating those defensemen. So now we have uh, Cernich and Heppel out there, whom I expected to see against Monjo's line after having talked to Don Waddell about it yesterday, but he hasn't really matched them. Dion Aru and Miam up front for the Rivermen and the Gulls Gretzky line with Darcy Norton and Denny Lambert. Cernich, lead pass Lambert. As Norton was knocked down in center, a shot block at the line offside call. 45 seconds left in the opening period. Game two, of course, is Friday night. Like to say hello to all of our viewers, wherever they may be tonight. The Booster Club are all gathered down there at the Bonita Store Restaurant. And I think, Sandy, with a hockey focus on the IHL and the AHL, I'm sure, with the National League still on strike, we got viewers everywhere. 
Well, the viewers will get a chance to see this IHL hockey. It's, of course, an excellent brand of hockey. A lot of these young players on their way to the NHL. A lot, of course, have played in the NHL this season. Shoe bottom puts the puck off the boards into center ice. It is dropped back into his own zone inadvertently by Aru. Shoe bottom chases around about a half minute left in the period. A 1 0 Peoria lead. Again, it is Scarta. Zigzags around behind his own blue line. Passes it off to Shoe bottom. Shot, shot off the boards into center ice. Cernich brought it up to the blue line. It is uh, forced out in front of the net to the point. Not much time. A drive by Heppel wide of the target. Over here on the other side. Riverman get it out of the zone. Chase down by Aru. Back into the zone. They're ragging the puck. There's just two seconds left in the period. And the horn sounds. And that's the end of the opening period of the West Division semifinal quarterfinal round of the IHL playoffs. Burke leading his teammates off the ice. Had to be a half a dozen quality chances in that first period. Both ends. Score one nothing, Fiori after one, and we'll take a break for these messages. Amarawali must have had at least an element of doubt. The Blues aren't uh, allowed to go and ask for the replay unless the referee decides that there's a reason to do that. And maybe, maybe when Brett Hull says it's in the net and it's been there 70 times, you, uh, <laughs> you give him the benefit of some doubt. But he hasn't missed too many, has he? You know, and the thing about him is he's been a very durable player. Now, he missed seven games just prior to the strike because of some back spasms. And again, they blame some of that on Stu Gavin as well. He didn't have any place to go as Churla just lined him up. And you saw in that replay, he got a, a stick up, an elbow up, and everything else. So the, the Blues, who are ahead by three, will go back on the power play. Rich Sutter. Testing that jaw to see if everything is still in place, and he seems to be okay on the Blues bench. Well, Darcy Wakaluk. Brian McKee's goal at 18:33 of the first period. Mark Bass and Brian Peller in assisting, and that's all so far. One nothing, Fiore after one. Earlier today, Gulf's coach and general manager Don Waddell got together for a chat about tonight's big matchup. So let's hear what Don's on Don's mind. Back of the net, Broughton challenges him, and Emerson makes a nice outlet pass to Jeff Brown. Brown trying to match the number on his sweater with goal number 21 for a lose record. He certainly got that chance here in the power play. Duchesne for Minnesota. For Broughton, trailing the play with Shaw. He has to turn around. Now there's a pass right on Broughton's stick, and a shot was deflected wide of Joseph. Lose a little careless in their own zone as Shanahan. Flips it ahead. Ron Wilson goes after it. Wakaluk will make the play along the boards. Bouncing out into the middle of the ice. Hull with it. Nice pass to Wilson. For Shanahan and he lost it to Nordy. Looks up ice as Derek Smith goes that way with Gavin. Gavin to Smith. Smith for Gavin. He scores! Short-handed. The North Stars make it 4-2. to two. What a great play by those two players. A great pass from Derek Smith. And Stu Gavin, you're going to see, knocked the puck right out of midair as Jeff Brown was on his back trying to cover him. A good play by Gavin as he hits the perfect pass to Derek Smith, and then he keeps... Well, that's the second goal since the strike by a Minnesota forward. Strange that it would come shorthanded. It wouldn't it be ironic if the last shorthanded goal in a North Stars game this season was scored by Minnesota. Right now, that's the case as Stu Gavin puts the North Stars within two. Here's a break down the left side for Bozon. A Christian Christian shoots. Wakaluk's got it with Ronnie Sutter right there, and Wakaluk won't let the puck loose as he'll hold it for the faceoff. By Stu Gavin is the North Stars' ninth of this season. Uh, needless to say, we don't want to repeat many times the North Stars have allowed 22 of them to tie a National Hockey League club record. Here's right in front Ronnie Sutter scores his second of the game and the three goal lead exists again.
talked all season long about the importance of faceoffs. And the Blues end up winning the faceoff right away. Are you going to see a great pass here from Dave Christian? Look at that perfect pass. All Ron Sutter has to do is redirect the puck. He's standing all alone in front of Wakaluk. But the perfect pass from Dave Christian is what allowed that goal. Perfect pass from Christian. And he's a guy that's really been in Brian Sutter's doghouse somewhat as of late. Was sat out the last game against Chicago. And there were some rumors that he was going to sit out this game tonight. But Sutter decided to put him back in the lineup. And he certainly has responded with a goal and a couple of assists. His assists on two power play goals by Ron Sutter, both in this third period. Sutter now one away from 20. Sandlin couldn't shoot the puck around the boards. Hatcher has to try to keep Felsner there. Blues dig it free. Emerson onto the stick of Chase. His shot didn't make it to the net. Gagne. Rolled it up the boards. Kelly chases another chance now. Wakaluk will come out and play it himself around the boards and make sure it gets out. And Brian Sutter has done a lot of different things too with his team. Nelson Emerson normally plays right wing, and Sutter has used them with a couple of different combinations at center tonight. Ron Wilson thought about heading for the net. Now he turns, drops it back to Kurt Giles, the former North Star captain, shoots right on. Wakaluk, a good challenging save with the pad. Tenorti turns back in his own zone. Just over six minutes remaining in the third period. The Blues have led all the way. They have led 3 nothing margins. Brett Hall, who opened the scoring in the game with his 70th goal, knocks it up to Wilson. He left it for Basson. Tenorti at the Minnesota line. Mike Craig lost it. Here's Brett Hull. Couldn't get a shot as Shaw knocked it off his stick, and Craig flips it off the boards and into the St. Louis zone. If the Blues win, they will have swept the four home games here this season against Minnesota. The North Stars didn't lose at home to the Blues, but two of the games were tied. So, thus, the season series would go to the Blues on the strength of those two road ties at the Met. Eric Smith, his pass intercepted by Ron Sutter. Ramage waits for it at the Minnesota line. Off to Ludwig. Churla heads straight down the slot himself, but lost the puck. Poke checked away from him. Lowry shot it in. Churla hitting Lowry well after the fact. Ronnie Sutter jumps on the puck. And then lost it to Rob Ramage, who leads a Minnesota rush. Up on the right side, the puck was deflected away from Churla and into the stands with 4.51 to go. Now, this has been a building that the North Stars have certainly had a lot of trouble in this, this season. They just haven't really played a good strong game in this building and the weakness for the Blues is to get on their defense and really forecheck them and cause some turnovers and that's something the North Stars just haven't been able to do in the four games here. Well I think their inability to play well in St. Louis has really been frustrating because you can go to Chicago Stadium and lose time after time and blame it on the building. But nobody uh, would indicate that there's anything intimidating about coming to the St. Louis Arena and if the North Stars can win or tie against the Blues at the Met. There's really no reason that they can't come and play better here, but they haven't played well in any of the four games at St. Louis. They'd love another chance, of course, to do that in the playoffs because that would mean that both teams would have won in the first round. Otherwise, it's going to be a lost year here for the North Stars at the St. Louis Arena. We disagree Joe you and I on whether the Blues have a chance to beat the Hawks. I think Curtis Joseph gives them that chance the way he can play and the way that Belfour has struggled at times this season. And I think the Blackhawks depend as much maybe even more on Jeremy Roenick than the Blues do on Brent Hall. So I think the key might be the goaltending and what the Blues do to combat Roenick. Well I, I agree with you from the standpoint that I think the Blues only chance against Chicago really is Curtis Joseph. Chicago seems to have the Blues number even though Chicago came in here a couple of nights ago and lost five to three with an empty net goal to the Blues in that building in 
in particular. The Blues have only won one road game in the Norris Division this year. That was in Chicago and had Jablonski's excellent goaltending. Forces Joseph to make a big save with a glove. Fans were responding with some noise to uh, an announcement on the signboard that asked them to be loud. There's not all that many of them left here to make the noise that would have existed with 16,000 people in the building. But it'll be full here when the Blackhawks come for games three and four of the playoffs as the North Stars hope it'll be at the Met Center for games three and four against Detroit. There's no traditional playoff history between these teams as the Red Wings and North Stars have never played each other in a playoff series. Something of a quirk in that they of course are both members of the Norris division and have been for several years. But the Wings are legitimate Stanley Cup contenders maybe as legitimate as Chicago was last season as Hull shoots one over the net. And the North Stars have to try and do the same thing they did a year ago and that is pull a shocking first round upset and gain some momentum and maybe go a lot farther than that. Well Dave you know there's a lot to be said for playoff experience and the North Stars certainly have that not only in their older players but even some of their younger players that had the opportunity to go through that sequence last year in the playoffs they gained a lot of experience they learned a lot about playoff hockey and I think that's going to help the North Stars when they start in Detroit on Saturday. The Wings have recently added uh, Troy Crowder well known heavyweight to their lineup he's missed most of the season with a back problem but he has played late in the season so there's the combination of Probert and Crowder to consider when the North Stars are without one of their main enforcers Basil McCray to play very rough and ended up taking a lot of penalties and the North Stars won the series with power play goals and if your power play is working then that prevents the other team from you know playing a, a rough style and and, uh, and getting penalties but I think Detroit will come out and play a physical game I mean for Bob physical Fedorov and Iserman and Heisebart and the rest of those speedy forwards will be doing their thing so it's going to be a difficult battle for the North Stars but again we've talked about how well they've played against Detroit this year they've got some hometown boys that are playing in front of their their families in Madonna and Hatcher so I think it's going to be a good series. Well, there have been entertaining games between the teams this season. The North Stars, two wins at Joe Louis Arena, were certainly Minnesota at its best on the road. There was a great 2-2 tie game at the Met Center, which should have been a Minnesota victory. A late goal, a fluky thing by Nicholas Lidstrom, prevented a Minnesota win. Here's a Kelly Chase, Shane Churla duel. That period stats, uh, of course, Peoria with the one goal. Shots, 17 shots by the Rivermen on Sean Burke. Power plays, neither team effective on the power play so far. 0 for 2 for the Gulls, 0 for 1 for Peoria. Power play shots, some good shots uh, by either side, five each. And penalties in minutes, the Gulls with a two minute minor and four minutes in minors to the Rivermen. Way too many shots, wouldn't you say? Yes, I, I'm surprised the shots came out that high, although there were a couple of flurries there by the Rivermen. The play seemed to be uh, relatively even, I thought. Uh, well, and the other thing that's happening here, too. The first game of the playoff series last year was so important to Minnesota in all of the playoff rounds, and I think the North Stars would probably like to come up with that formula again, realizing the importance of gaining a quick jump on a team that might be expecting an easy time. Well, in all four of those series, they... 118 points. Steve Tuttle, 60. And Kevin Meehan with 53 assists was the Peoria leader. Annette. All season long, there's some pressure in that first round to win that first game at home. And I've seen it time and time again where the teams that are expecting to win or should win. Are going. Here they're going to finish with 70 points, which is only two more than they wound up with last season at 68. So for quite a while, the North Stars have realized that if they were going to make anything of this season, it would have to be the same way they did it last season, and that is by springing playoff surprises. They waited a while for the playoffs to come, longer than they thought they'd have to because of the strike. Here's Shanahan in front of the net. Wakaluk reaches for a goal stick that's in the net. Shanahan continues from the corner. The puck slides to the line, and now Gagne will get it out. He has a... 112 points, Muskegon 95, Milwaukee and Kalamazoo tied at 84 with Milwaukee 
getting the edge based on wins. I think we alluded to it earlier. You've got the number three and four clubs overall out of the 10 teams in this series here tonight. This may very well be the best, or certainly one of the best in the uh, whole Turner Cup playoffs this year as we look at Andre. Goal a goal scoring season. Minnesota trails by two again with 54 seconds left. And I think it's important that they score these goals late. Alf Dahlin hasn't scored in a while. He had a great year, led this team in scoring, and to get a late goal just may spur him on as the playoffs start on Saturday. But good for Alf Dahlin. He's had a terrific... Uh, the experts say in this playoff, and it's been a terrific year for him for the goals to be successful. Yes, I think that uh, he has been talked to about that, uh, certainly. Joseph on the stick side to the far post. shot it in. Dolan gets his 36 of the season. He hoped, I think, to reach the 40 mark, and earlier in the year there were indications that he'd do that, but 36 still representing by far Rolf Dolan's most productive National Hockey League season. He'd been at 20 in every other season, but now closer to 40. Tenorti flipped it out. Bozon, who has his first NHL goal, shoots it back in with 20 seconds to go. The Blues that far away from sweeping their games here at the arena against Minnesota and it'll be St. Louis winning the season series on the strength of two ties at the Met. Next week, starting Saturday in fact, the Blues think about Chicago and the North Stars tackle Detroit. That's it for the regular season, historic as it was with a first ever player strike. And now the North Stars try to do what they did a year ago, shock the world of the playoffs by knocking off one of the NHL's top regular season team. Last season it was Chicago. This season it'll have to be Detroit if the North Stars are to move along the playoff trail. And let's not forget about the playoff experience. Both Bob Gainey and his coaching staff have gone through it this year and it's certainly going to be in effect this coming. Stop was made, Sandy and Burke argued, but the puck wiggled loose and slid in over the line. We may get another look at that. Well, referee Derek Martin was right in position. Burke made that initial save, of course. However, the rebound popped loose as we watch Tuttle trying to break around the defense. He makes a little drop pass, and the, the puck is left momentarily by Ruff. The rebound coming back. And it's, you can see it loose there behind Sean Burke's back, and it finally slid over the ice as Tuttle picked up the loose rebound. He had a good piece of it, but it had just enough momentum to slide over that line. 2 nothing, and a goal in the first minute of the second period throws a new light on things. As Jason Simon, a full-blooded Chippewa Indian for the goals, another shot by Simon turned away by a bear. In behind the net to Dugate. Dugate trying to center it there, did. It was blocked by defenseman Jason Marshall. Gulls have on pressure, trying to get back in after falling behind 2-0. Sergei Starikov, one of the three Russian Gulls. Ahead, broken up, shoe bottom, brought it to center ice. Gets set as he was being checked by Duque and drove it in. Burke takes it behind the net, stopping it there for Starikov. Up the left side, but not all the way, Skarda drives it back in wide of the net. Starikov chases down, ahead to Whitney, two on two. He has got Simon with him, picks his way in, pull down and off. The puck and Skarda takes over, racing back. San Diego blue line outside the shot, into the glove, and out of it as Leggett cleared it away after Basson shot. Back of the San Diego net, driven off the boards, going the length of the ice. Gulls will be called for icing early in the period, and they are down 2-0 at 144 with his stop. Well, the official on that goal, Steve Tuttle, his first of the playoffs, the assist to Michel Monjo as that line was swarming the net after Monjo's first shot was saved by Sean Burke. Tuttle getting the rebound and Ruff in there helping them out. 23 seconds into the second period, the 2-0 lead for Peoria. These clubs, statistically, you saw some of them there, match up darn well on paper. Yes, they certainly do. They're very even on paper, and it's just going to take hustle by the Gulls. All three lines are just going to have to work real hard. They're going to have to continue to take the body, especially down in the attacking zone. Gull captain Alan Heppel over center ice. Fires it in the corner. Lambert trying to break in. Got a little bit of it, but he was being hooked at, and the shot 
was by the net. Dumped and cleared. Derek Mayer has it there, followed by Basson. Quickly up Darcy Norton. Deflects it in near the Peoria net. Scarda takes over. Shot it around to the far side. It went to the line. A shot by Mayer. Wide of the target. Scarda comes after it. Gretzky. Out on the left side. Here they come. Putting Basson in. Shoots. Big save by goaltender Sean Burke. A big collision in the corner as Hoover went in there heavily with Heppel. Sent down the ice. Scarda back for it. Shot around to the far boards to Mark Basson. Basson out of his own zone. One of two hockey playing brothers in this organization. He rips one in that was wide of the target. Far side. Bellerin. Bellerin tied up by Ray Whitney. He's had an outstanding rookie year in professional hockey. Chipped it ahead. Stopped by Ruff. Shot to the backboard. 2 nothing in favor of Peoria. Eppel lead pass Whitney. Took it on his skate up off the stick. Cuts in over on the left side. Forced to stop. Tied up by Tuttle. Puck recovered by Monjo. Out to Ruff. Far side. Loose puck recovered by Starkov. Quick pass. Martinson. Play little. Here's a pass. Whitney shot. Turned up over top of the net. Got a blocking glove. Centered in front from the corner by Larry Floyd who's on now. Now intercepted by Monjo. He drove it off the boards. It is traveling the length of the ice. Burke went out as if to play, but Starkov will get it. Icing will be the stoppage at 3.30, second period. And with the Riverman up front now, 2-0 after an early second period goal, we're going to take a break for this message. Well, Ray Whitney with a good scoring chance there off the feed from Martinson. A quick shot by Whitney. Ebert got a piece of it off the glass. He has a 3.40 goal average uh, uh, in the uniform of the Riverman this year and under three goals as the puck clears the playing surface under three goal average in 12 games up with a big club in St. Louis. Well, you know, we uh, we talked about uh, pronunciation of names, uh, Lavoie being one of them. And what about Guy Ebert? Here's a man from Troy, New York, and he pronounces his name Guy Ebert as opposed to Guy Hebert. Uh, how about the kid they've got from Oxnard, California? Aru. That's right. Uh, a, a peon, I believe, oh, is uh, me, peon. From, uh, peon. from Oxnard, and then he grew up in the Montreal area and went to Merrimack College. Peon is correct. Shoebottom around his own net and out the right side. They come a pass to Tuttle and on through Monjo. Whitney overskated it as he closed. Picked up by Starikov. It across the blue line to Martinson. Martinson getting set for the puck is deflected off a stick out into center ice. Almost at the four minute mark of the second period. Down the boards, Martinson and Shoebottom, two big men and rough. Over on the near side, Floyd tried to get it back to the line, but it was picked off by Tuttle. Monjo away along with Ruff. To uh, the right side, Tuttle shoots and glove and held by goaltender Sean Burke. Well, the goal's caught with the three men down deep in the Riverman zone. They've got to forecheck. Of course, when you get down a couple of goals, you may take a couple more chances, but it's early in the game to be taking that kind of a chance where you have three men down that deep getting caught. Now, a, a three-on-two break, of course, the other way. They don't want to be giving up those outnumbered rushes. Only three minor penalties in the game thus far, so they're sticking pretty much to their knitting. Well, that's one of the areas that I know the Gulls talked about. They don't want to be taking any bad penalties. Now, you, you take a, a penalty through just good, aggressive play, that's one thing. But you don't want to be taking any uh, stupid little uh, hooking or tripping penalties down in the attacking zone or the retaliatory penalties. John Waddell, uh, one foot up on the bench guiding his goals as general manager and coach, sharing the coaching duties with Charlie Simmer. Face off to Burke's left. It is uh, picked off at the right side by Pion. Shot back of the net. Chase to the far side by Miam. Battle over there on the boards with Kabartelnoff tying him up. Got it out to Hackborn. Quick pass up the middle. Blocked there by Lavoie. Shot it back into the corner. Al Leggett wearing that protective face shield. Holds it in behind his own net. Out they come, lead pass, Robbie Nichols out of the Toronto area, interception. Lavoie, he put Pion in alone, going right in to go, gets it, big save! Rebound try, blocked by Burke again. Oh boy, saved them twice in a row. Centered in front of the net, and again Burke chases it as the goals in trouble. Loose puck is finally cleared out over the blue line. John Burke showed you his magnificence there. Tony Esposito must have been 
cheering that one sitting up here in the stands. Besant Trophy winner and Hockey Hall of Famer. That was some kind of goaltending. Still 2-0, Peoria. Davois to Aru and cleared into center ice. Leggett fires it right back into the corner. 2-0, Peoria. Guy Bear. Boy, they must have done a lot of shopping in the French provinces with all these French Name the players. Eru, one of them down the right side. San Diego zone puts on a burst centered in front of the net. But the wingman on the far side was covered, but over covered. That was Pion via penalty here to San Diego. 2 0. Peoria going to get the power play. We'll be back after this message. Unbelievable plays by Sean Burke here. First, the big save on Pion. And then the puck just lay around in that San Diego goal mouth. After that, Sean Burke made another save off the pads and then deflected up off the glass. And now a, a, a huge development as far as the Gulls are concerned. They've just lost Len Hackborn for the rest of the night. Hackborn has been called five minutes for spearing and, of course, an automatic game misconduct. So many circumstances, that's retaliation, but I don't recall what could call or didn't see what happened. As we're following that uh, breakaway, we took our eyes off of what was going on behind the play, and that's where it occurred. But obviously, referee Derek Martin saw the play all the way. So five minutes to Len Hackborn. The Gulls are shorthanded for five, and they lose him for the night. No matter what ha happens, they can score as often and as frequently in that five minutes. We're back underway. A crucial moment early in the contest, really, because there's still over 14 minutes to play in the second period. Down low and in the zone. Tuttle is slammed into the boards and his helmet knocked off. Ruff as well. His bump. Back to the left point. Slid back into the corner by Kevin Meehan. Out to the line. Skarda works it down low again. Now back to the point. Returns to Skarda. Watch by Robbie Nichols. A shot by Ruff is wide of the target and off the boards and coming way back down into the Peoria zone. That penalty has 420 left in it. 420. The Gulls have got a kill off here. Nichols was just upended as well. Ron Duguay. Here they come with four men up. Right side, Aru into the corner, centering. Try the pass out was blocked. Goes uh, slapped to the line, but not out. A shot. They score. Long Joe. Let it go. Another big blast. It looked like Mongeau's shot hit something on the way in. You'll see the shot from the top of the faceoff circle. A good scoring zone beating Sean Burke. But it did look as though that uh, it had been deflected. The Gulls had a chance to clear the zone once. Did not quite get the puck out over the blue line up the middle. And the Rivermen turned that right back into a scoring opportunity. Scored in the first 57 seconds of the five-minute major. Eve Aru is getting credit. Sandy got it, got it correctly. Play, penalty will continue for still three minutes and 50 seconds. Duque down the right side. Poke ticked off his stick by Skarda. Recovered and taken by Pion. Right wing pass broken up as he crossed the line. Skarda saved it. Cross ice. Here comes Dominic Lavoie. Pass, shot, ended up, stopped, and held at the side of the right post by Sean Burke. Big crowd around in front of him. The Rivermen known for scoring in bunches. It seems as though when a goal is scored, the Rivermen come right back on that next shift and either try to generate another goal if it was themselves that scored, or if the other team scored, they try to even it up real quickly. There's something about that next shift that they've really worked on being strong in that situation. Goals are, for, excuse me, Excuse me, Iru on the goal, assist to Mongeau, and the time, 6-18, a power play goal. Good thing the Gulls have a spare centerman in Larry Floyd. He's going to have to fill in here because they've lost Len Hackborn, a serious loss to the Gulls because of a major penalty and a game misconduct. And what have we got? we got a fight down in the corner. Well, the beginnings of a fight, Derek Mayer, was uh, the goal now obscured uh, by myself. I think it was uh, number 12, Ron Hoover, but we'll have to check. 
That may cost Robbie Nichols right there. That was in front of uh, Derek Martin. I think he saw that last shot. We've got a score from out of town. Kalamazoo leading Fort Wayne for nothing. 2.45 left in the first period. It's starting to rock in here. This place is only half full, but that's coming. We're going to take a break right now. 3 nothing Peoria. We'll be back after this message. Get them. Okay, 3 nothing. If you've just joined us from Civic Center, Peoria in favor of the Rivermen, defending Turner Cup champions. Bois stops back of his own net with a puck. Out they come, Tuttle heading up the ice. Miam on the right side. He elects to drive it in past the net, and it comes all the way out and sails back into the Peoria zone. Lavoie retrieves it as a bear was over in the corner to watch Nichols, uh, Larry Floyd, Court Cernix, and Alan Heppel trying to kill off this penalty. As Monjo sprints down the right side, pass out in front. Burke makes a save rebound, and it is cleared by Nichols toward the line, but picked off by Lavoie. The Monjo over on the left side to Kevin Meehan. Let's the shot go, and that is turned away. Burke down in a Pile as Larry Floyd, the Gulls' assistant captain, drives it down the ice. 11.50 to play. Second period. Back of his own net now, Lavoie, Lavoie. Lead pass. Gretzky, Monjo had a, each other tied up. Lavoie drives it into the San Diego zone. This should be icing. A rush uh, between Cernic waved off by that linesman. A Peoria player got a stick in there first. Now uh, Jason Ruff to Monjo in the corner. He is bumped out of the play. Excuse me, Monjo here on the near side, and it was Tuttle on the board. Ron Duguay comes up the ice. His pass for Cernic went off escape. Recovered. Right wing pass. Aru closing. Centering try for Frenette. Went to Pion. Back to the left point. Down in the corner to Pion. Watched by Duguay. And broken up by Duguay. Nice play. Gretzky, one man back. That's McKee. Over the blue line, winds up. Drills a shot, but over top of the Peoria net. Came out to Duguay, and the goal penalty killer flips it into the corner. One and a half minutes left in that major penalty. They still have 28, number 28 showing, but Hackborn, excuse me, Hackborn, yes, one who got the major penalty. Buck driven off the boards and out into center ice. Scarta back for it to McKee in the center ice area. On it comes to Tuttle on a deflection. Stop, drop pass, Scarta. Partially checked, got it across to Monjo. Quick pass out, try block. At the line to McKee. Down the boards to Monjo. In the corner, centered Monjo. Can't get away the shot. Was checked. Recovers control. Goes back to the net check by Alan Leggett. Now they still have it. Centered in front of the net, went to the line, wind up. The shot turned away by Burke. Scarta's drive from just inside the point. Tremendous pressure. Here's Tuttle moving in to the side. A big save by Sean Burke who moved quickly to his left to block the drive. Sean Burke just playing some outstanding goaltending here in the second period. The Gulls would be in some serious trouble without him. 44 seconds remaining in that major penalty. Here's a play by Tuttle to Manjo, all by himself down low. Burke made it across that goal mouth going from right to left, stacked the pads and made a beautiful save and covered the loose puck. John Burke, six. One, well, he, I think he's 6'4", isn't he? 6'4". Can't read my own writing 210 here. 210 pounds. He's a big man and an incredible balance. Stays on his feet very well. He's always on his skates. You'll often see him make a, a save and then be right back on his feet for that rebound before it's even taken. As Martinson is uh, over in the penalty box serving the remainder of Hackborn's penalty. 44 seconds remaining in that major penalty. 3-0 Peoria. Face off between Peon and Ron Duque. Two uh, players of French extraction. Duque played his hockey up in Sudbury. Hello to all the fans that might be viewing up that way. Back of the San Diego to Pion centering try. Heppel blocked that. Eru trying to Eru trying to center it. It went over to the boards. Scarta pinched in from there. Back to the blue line across to McKee. Watched by Robbie Nichols. Fired it in the corner. 27 seconds left. The penalty centered out in front of the net. Broken up. Gulls can't clear. 3 0 Peoria. Cernich checks. His man, Hoover, sends it around to the far board. Winding up, Heppel takes a long shot down the ice. 11 seconds left in the penalty. Gulls uh, will have survived 
A big, uh, crucial point in the hockey game if they can get out of this without further damage. But key down the left side and over the San Diego line. Broken up by Whitney as the penalty expires. Martinson comes back on. Here's a breakaway. Kabardalov going right and go against it. She scores! And Martinson was just flattened by Peel. Should be a penalty there. That all came after. Dmitry Kavardlov had scored on a setup. Martinson making it happen, and Kavardlov going in to beat Pia Bear, and the Gulls are back within two on a goal at 10:48. Well, Pion, of course, upset with Martinson. Martinson came out on his blind say A big goal here for the Gulls, a really big goal. Whether there'll be a call on Pion or not, I think is questionable here. Here's the break as uh, Marty knocked the puck away from Pion. And Kabardlov this time shooting, which is certainly his forte. No deke at all. Just a good shot. And they're giving a, a misconduct penalty to Pion, a 10-minute misconduct for pulling down Martinson well after that goal was scored, just in anger. Referee Derek Martin not seeing it, but going to his linesman for information, they call the penalty. The guy that has to come through just did. Absolutely, he's their man. 60 this year, the scoring champion, the goal scoring champion, the point scoring champion has it again, trying to feed Whitney. Now as we pass the 11 minute mark of the period, and uh, the goals trying to shave it down. Long lead pass for Pellerin. Boy, it's getting rough out there. There's been a lot of stick action. Basson brings it over the blue line. Pellerin tied up. Puck recovered and shot by Mayer into center ice. Lavoie with it there for Peoria. Drives it in off the glass. Bounces behind the net. Sean Burke, a spectacular figure. And there is a spectacular collision. Who is going to get the gate? It's got to be the Peoria player. Brian Pellerin will get the game. And we're going to take a break with the goals down three to one for these messages. Pellerin, the rookie from Hinton, Alberta, played his junior hockey up at Prince Albert, uh, takes a two minute charging penalty at 11.25 of the second period as he made contact with Sean Burke. Whitney Nichols, Kabartelnoff up front, Hackborn gone for the night, incurring a major and a game misconduct earlier in the period. And a big loss to the goals. Whitney takes over, just inside of his own blue line, on the point, Larry Floyd, who has the puck now, and Derek Mayer, both of who have big shots. Want to set him up, lead pass, cut off by Tuttle. Heads back toward the net, drops it off, and uh, turned around, and losing it was Mark Bassett. Now the goals come out. Robbie Nichols carries, center ice, straight up the middle. Flips it into the corner, taken down, back for the puck, Tuttle. Tuttle chased by Whitney, clear to the line, but not out. Here's Mayer in the middle, drives and turns away, bounces off the shoulder of Nichols to the corner. 112 left in the Gulls power play opportunity. Mayer and Whitney working back and forth. Over to Mayer, right at the blue line, winds up, shoots, that's tip, and that'll go over the glass. That was off the stick of Tuttle, up into the crowd, out of play. We see right away, as could be expected, Ray Whitney now at center on that hotline as Hackborn has been ejected for the rest of the night. Whitney has played in between Kovartlenov and Nichols before, and it always seems to increase his production. Ray Whitney, the 19-year-old, uh, second choice by the San Jose Sharks in last summer's draft, has been a real find for Don Waddell and the San Diego Gulls. 36 goals, 90 points in 63 games. You wonder if he'd have been here all year, he would have probably challenged Special K. He certainly would have. His points per game average is right up there. He's a Hoover taking the face off against Whitney just inside the Peoria blue line. However, they get the draw and Jason Marshall drives it spinning along the boards. Back for it, Gulls diminutive and clever little forward. Larry Floyd lost control of the puck, slapped away by a bear, dumped into center ice. Gulls have to come back to form up as Burke controlled the puck for Derek Mayer. Out of the Detroit Red Wings organization, back with the Gulls this season. Right, driven in wider than it'll be an icing call as Marshall gets back to tag up, touch up. 7.09 to play in a period, 34 seconds left in the Peoria penalty. The Gulls down by 3-1. The Gulls are going to have to go with uh, plan two as uh, Don Waddell paces the bench there. 34 seconds remaining, so out comes the Duguay line now. Duguay, Norton, and Martinson. So Duguay is going to move into center ice, at least on this shift. It may be just because 
Ray Floyd, or excuse me, Larry Floyd, thinking of golf here already, and it's not summer yet. Larry Floyd playing on the point on the power play, so Ron Duguay at center now with Martinson and Norton. Eva Rue will take the draw against the Duguay. The Burks left looking out at the face off circle. Darcy Norton flashed, flashed into the picture there. Martinson came over. And they get a false start, uh, at least over anxious wingers on the play puck in amongst the skates, backhanded toward the net. Nor Norton chases it down for the goal. Gave it to Mayor uh, Leggett now on the ice behind the net. Out he comes and we pass the 13 minute mark. 23 left in the penalty seconds, that is. Drive around here on the near side. Duguay tips it to Leggett. Backs toward the blue line. Across the drive, wide of the left post. And recovered by Darcy Norton to Duguay. Left point. Leggett down the boards in the circle. Duguay drives it. Pass Marshall and the net. Trying to pick the far corner. Send him behind the goal. Picked off by Martinson who helped set up that first goal. Penalty expires. R Rivermen are back to full strength. Hoover ties up Martinson in the corner, but Martinson is trying to force a face off in there. They uh, rough each other up after the whistle now sounds. Steve Martinson showing good good control here tonight of his emotion, Sandy. Earlier, you, the old, uh, you know, during the season, he might have jumped up and started hammering on his opponent. 3-1, Peoria, 6.24 left in the period, and we'll be right back. On your next trip to the San Diego Sports Arena, visit the Gulls Novelty Stand. Pick out your favorite Gulls souvenir. Great Gulls t-shirts, pennants, pucks, sweatshirts, and Gulls hats are on sale now. Gulls novelties can be ordered direct by calling 688-1800. We're back at the Civic Center in Peoria. Or in spite of uh Fion being one of their best uh, penalty killers and being sent off for 10 minutes. They were, Fury Rivermen were without him, of course, but nonetheless, they killed off that power play chance by the Gulls. And Gretzky got it back to the point, the drive from there by Cernich, wide of the target. Tip toward the line by McKee, and away they come, Pellerin, and uh, two men back. Pellerin winds up, shoots, scores! Picking the left-hand side. from Hinton, Alberta, and last year with Prince Albert and the juniors got all of that and got the short side, making it 4-1. to one. A great shot by Pellerin as he, he managed to back up the defense. He pushed Cernich back deep enough over that blue line, and then he got to just inside the top of that faceoff circle, and that is certainly in the scoring zone. A great shot by him, a slapper that beats Sean Burke cleanly. That, that one uh, hurts. And the goals fall behind by three. Again, tied up in the corner to the right of the San Diego network. Loose, Alan Heppel gets to it. Watch by Frenette out the left side. Denny Lambert, the goals fine rookie, brings it in over the blue line, and that play is broken up. Down the right side for Bassett. Bassett chased off the puck by Jason Simon. Lambert heads back. Lambert into the corner, being turned around uh, by Skarda. And they battle over there. Play is whistled. Penalty coming up. Neither goaltender had vacated their net, so it's difficult to say whether it's either or or both. And they continue to rough each other up. 5.35 left in the second period as we get this stoppage here. Lambert and Skarda will likely both be going. We still have another one down below as Pellerin and Jason Simon have been trying to get at one another. They're still going at it down there. Other players keep getting involved in the fracas. Denny Lambert out of Wawa, Ontario has got the whole neighborhood gathered at a local watering spot watching this contest. And they, they're probably up on their feet cheering Sandy as he does his thing. Well, I'd have to say Denny Lambert has had a great season for the Gulls. He's one of the players that Don Waddell was alluding to when he said he had a few other guys that uh, came along this season and did just a heck of a job. They were maybe picked up a little by that hotline. As the hotline got strong, other players got stronger too. Here's how it all began. There's Scarden Lambert in the corner. 
Scarta no slouch himself, both rough guys. Scarta is out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Well, the goals are getting the extra two on this, as you might have seen from the replay. It looked as though that first call was going to Denny Lambert. He had the stick up on the side of Scarta's helmet, and then he pulled him down in a bit of a headlock. John Wadella more concerned right now. Just a half shake of the head there as the Rivermen have regained a three-goal lead. Probably a lot of uh, people out of work have just got down to the Bonita Store restaurant, and all those gold boosters are down there, Sandy, watching the live telecast tonight, and uh, others are on the highways and byways listening on our radio portion. Well, I've been into the Bonita Store. I know it's a lot of fun down there to watch any sporting event. Hi to all those folks there as Dominic Lavoie winds up from center ice, drives it in the San Diego corner. Rough over there, knocked off his stick. Flick back to the line. Here's Lavoie as it go off his stick out in the center ice. Chased by Robbie Nichols, but inadvertently shot it over the glass. 133 left in the goal shorthanded situation. Well, those penalties at 14.25 of the second period are to Denny Lambert, two minutes for slashing and additional two minutes for roughing. And the other to Randy Scarda a two-minute roughing minor. So the Rivermen on their third power play chance of the night, and they're currently one for two, including that major penalty. Game two Friday night, live at five. Back of that is the West Coast time. Back of his own net now, and a pass comes from Miam to Lavoie. Comes over center ice, rips it in around back of the net, taken and drilled down the ice by Alaska's contribution to the goals, Gord Cernich. He, he Bear stopped behind the net. In comes Nichols. Oh boy, he handled that puck pretty well with that big goal stick. Ducked away from the goals. Robbie Nichols. Lavoie up the middle. Shot the puck in behind the San Diego net. Stopped there by Burke. Shot it off the glass. Chipped up off the glass. Swiped that by Heppel, but missed. They trap it on the near corner boards. And referee Derek Martin brings a stop in play. 4.22 left in the period. 47 seconds left in the goals penalty. Sean Burke taking advantage of that extra high glass around here as uh, we watch Alan Heppel on his way to for a line change. Burke getting that puck up real high off the glass. Get it past those on rushing forwards. You see a lot of goaltenders get caught shooting the puck over the glass. Of course, it's an automatic two minute minor. The higher glass here pretty well saves the goaltender from that embarrassment. Quick program update on the television portion of Friday night's contest. The broadcast will not begin until 5.30 West Coast time on the Cable Sports Network because of a programming change. That'll be 5.30 at game time rather than at 5 o'clock. Gretzky with a puck in his own zone. The diminutive brother of uh, the big guy racing after the puck, but we get a penalty call. Monjo was down. And there'll be another penalty called here at 15.53. Ron Duguay looked over in the direction of the official. Is he going? No, it's uh, the penalty's going to the Riverman. Ah. I thought it was called on Monjo, as a matter of fact. But Evens uh, it up on the ice. No one heading to the box at this point. Here goes Monjo across the ice now. So, so things are evened up. Uh, 32 seconds remaining in the minor penalty to Lambert. Quick note on our director tonight, Mark Stolberger, who is directing this show, is this is a return home for him, a graduate of local university, Bradley University, worked all the San, Diego, San Jose Sharks games, formerly did USA Network and Los Angeles Kings, and it's nice to have him along, running the show out of the Civic Center in Peoria. Dave Marcus, our floor director, cast of thousands, Face off top of the circle in the Peoria zone. A four on four opportunity briefly. So maybe get some wide open skating here. Ron Duguay can certainly motor. See if he can get loose with the puck. Lavoie takes the puck behind his own net. Watched by Darcy Norton. Got it to Hoover. Hoover's banged into the boards. And a broken stick for Stark off a races to the bench as the puck was cleared. There's 18 seconds left. And the goals penalty. 143 to San Diego. 
excuse me, the Peoria penalty as Norton rails at the referee. Kevin Meehan down the far side into the San Diego zone, trying to feed it out in front to Hoover. Darakoff checks him, pile of players. Meehan got up, worked it to the line. San Diego now back to the full strength as Martinson gets back on. Saw a tour of duty with the Minnesota North Stars earlier in the season. Gull's glad to have his strength and experience back. Also a former Montreal Canadian, played around the NHL. Driven in behind the goal net. 3.15 to play. Second period, 4-1 Peoria. 105 left in the goal's manpower advantage. Long lead pass for Special K, Dimitri Kavartelnov. A lot of new viewers and listeners, so when we say Special K, we're referring to the goal scoring and point scoring champion out of Russia, Dimitri Kavartelnov. Drill the fans, uh, even though they're the others. Here he comes in, makes the shot, left, Nichols wind up, shoots right on, hit, hit, he bear up high, and stayed out. It was aimed for the top left-hand corner. Riverman clear, 35 seconds left in the Gulls manpower advantage. They trail 4-1. Mayer down the left side, good skating defenseman, in across the line, trying to shed a checker or two. Backs off, pass ahead for Larry Floyd, who went in. Went behind the net, now over to Floyd, who has it. Floyd trying to set up a shot. Tamir drives over top of the net as Nichols left. Rebound try by Whitney. Tied up by Shoebottom. And it is uh, driven into the crowd out of play. Shoebottom sweeping that stick towards Larry Floyd while Larry was handling the puck. I think if, if certainly if Larry had stepped forward and allowed the stick to make contact with the puck, there would have been a penalty call. But you're not supposed to pitch clear a stick that's laying on the ice in that fashion. I also thought, as you mentioned, uh, Darcy Norton railing at the referee. If you'll remember, this same official gave Darcy a penalty for doing just what was done to him. As he uh, tried to chase down the puck carrier in the corner, he was picked off by another defender. And those picks, they've been calling pretty consistently, and they called it on him. In fact, Derek Martin called it on him last weekend in San Diego. This call, uh, he just decided not to make, and Darcy didn't like it. Look at Monjo as he has 10 seconds left in his penalty. The medical people had to race down to attend to a fan who was obviously struck by that uh, shot as it left the playing surface. Heppel over in the right boards. Court Cernich moving up. Shoots block. Calls Whitney. Can't get a drive away. Was pulled down. Penalty is up. Out the right side of roof. Left side. Hoover the pad save by goaltender John Burke. Out to center ice. 155 left second period. Gulls trailing 4-1, but don't seem really out of the game yet. Long ways to go. Simon having trouble passing offside Peoria at the San Diego line. That broadcast reminder again that Friday's second game telecast will not begin until 5.30 on the San Diego Cable Sports Network and not as previously announced at 5. Well, as you mentioned, the Gulls not out of it. Uh, we see Charlie Simmer on the bench there along with uh, Don Waddell. Keeping the guys pumped up. Gulls won two out of the last three contests against this team. They won six to two in the last meeting between the two teams. Lest we forget, 7.05 is broadcast time is on radio as the puck clears the playing surface once again. That's Friday night for game two, 7.05 on KSDO, AM 11.30, our radio outlet for all goal broadcast home and away. Bowman Road, Gulls in 1991-92, 1917-5. They were quite a bit over 500 at one point, Sandy. Still a very good road record for the Gulls in their second season. But it's at home this year that they've shone. Uh, here, and you'll see them. You'll get your opportunity Friday night and then again on uh, Monday. And the tickets are on sale for those two games right now. Got back of the San Diego net. John Burke controls it there for Captain Allen Heffel. 122 left in the field. Out the left side. To Simon. Over to Cernich. You had to kind of wait for that as he took a bump at the boards from Mark Bassett. In the zone. It's kept in by uh, Heffel. Tries to, excuse me, by Cernich. Now down the right side. Pellerin beaten to it by Heffel. Now Darcy Norton. Shot it across the blue line. Down the left side, we're in the final minute of the third. The shot from there by McKee. In the corner, centering try for Bass. Came across, Scarta pinched in from the right point. Sent it back of the net, went through to Allen Heppel, a goals defenseman to Darcy Norton. Gretzky breaks up the ice looking for the pass. Has to wait, Darcy Norton with the drive. From outside the line is wide. 
37 seconds left in the period. Heppel, and uh, he is hit by Pellerin, who left his skates again. I don't know why, why something like that isn't called. Is that not charged? It's a late hit, too. In the corner, and Duge from Kabartilov goes without Hackborn for most of this period now after he was ejected. Broken up, and away they head for net carry. Lex to drive it in, but this will be an icing stoppage. 11 seconds left. Icing stoppage against Peoria. Gulls trailing by 4-1. Well, we've seen some of that high-powered offense that we've been talking about. A lot of goals in this period. We've seen four goals, three, of course, by the Rivermen and one by Dmitry Kabartlnov. If we look at uh, Sergei Starikov, real solid defenseman for the Gulls. A defenseman a lot like uh, Doug Harvey style. He plays his job well defensively, plays a very smart heads-up game and lays a perfect passes. Doesn't take a lot of scoring chances himself. Pressure is nothing to him. Played for Soviet Red Army and in the Olympics for many, many years. At center ice, bounced it back to the blue line. Gulls trap offside. Yes, he played He played uh, Olympic teams, world championships. Had a two-night hat trick at the end of the season. He got three goals in two games. <laughs> yeah, as Call a matter of fact, two-nighter. He, he, I think he probably took more, more, than, more shots in those two games than he did uh, probably in the month of March. Steady on the defense. Played for the New Jersey Devils when he left the Soviet Union. Grew up in what is known as Siberia. What else could you do there? Puck drop? That ends the second period. And a big one it is for the Peoria Rivermen as they go off with a 4-1 advantage. And the only goal that spoiled an otherwise perfect situation for them was Dmitry Karvartilov's at 10.48 of the period, but Bellerin got that one back at 13.51. 4-1 after two periods of play. We're going to take a break for these messages. National Hockey League goalie. So it is the Monjo line and Whitney in a uh, mixed up line because of the loss of Hackborny centering Nichols and Karvartilov pucks in behind the San Diego net, comes out the right side, slapped off the boards and picked up by Ray Whitney. Tuttle watching Nichols on the far side. Whitney coming into the zone. Chased by Robinson and who takes the puck. Tied up along the near boards. Now a drive and that is over top of that. Heppel took it off the boards. Quick shot turned away. Rebound try by Whitney. Puck went into the corner and a hard collision on the glass. Coming out of the mess with it is Robinson. Peoria defenseman tucks it into the corner and peels toward the bench as Burke controls the puck for Alan Heppel. New lineup up there now for the Rivermen. Lead pass to Whitney. Chased off by Pellerin. They jam in front of the penalty box. Nichols let fly from there. The Gulls will have their opportunity to change now as play is whistled at the 56 second mark, third period. Well, you watch Robinson break out of his zone there as we uh, look at Shoebat, Shoebottom, their highest penalty minute uh, defenseman. Uh, Shoebottom, a rough customer, but I was mentioning that uh, Peoria's defenseman lugged that puck so well Robinson a great example of it right there on that first shift as he picked it up and he got up into high gear real quickly moved up the ice to, to be a part of a three on three break Basson Floyd in the face off came to the line now the drive from there turned away by Sean Burke Ron Duguay one of the few players still uh, without the helmet flowing locks brings the puck to center ice lifts it into the corner wide of the net Floyd went in Frenette got a piece of him Puck taken by Jason Marshall. Marshall around on the far boards and flipped into center ice by Brian Pellerin. Gulls send it right back in. Leg it on defense with Sergei Starikov. Around on the far side, Pellerin and uh, the Gulf forward tie one another up. Shot toward the net. Block in the slot area. And at the uh, near the line, Pellerin sweeps it off the boards. Burke has to come way out of the net as Basson was down there fast. Gulls head back. Leggett winds up, shoots, glove save for a bear. In behind the goal and around in the boards, Aru bumped by Gulls wingman Jason Simon. Left side, drive by Basson, comes to Burke at the side of his own net. Third minute, third period, play 4-1 and play in favor of the Rivermen. 
Game two here on Friday night. Game three Saturday. Game four Monday, the third and fourth in San Diego. Keith Gretzky at his pass hit Pion. Taken behind the net. Mayer shot it to the line, but not out as the bumping picks up. Stop at the blue line. Leggett then took over to Mayer. Ahead at center ice, Simon. Flipped it in for Gretzky. Broken up inside the zone by Scarta. Drive offside San Diego at 2.30, third period. We're going to come right back with the Riverman leading 4-1 to one after this message. Ice area. Ron uh, Duque against Pion. Puck goes into the Peoria zone. They lead 4-1 to one if you've joined us late. Broadcast from Civic Center Peoria. First game, best of seven, quarterfinal round. Sent in across the line. Goals are offside at the Peoria blue line. 17-13 now left in regulation time. Goals need one pretty quick to get going. Well, they do. But you made an interesting point just before that uh, last break, and that is that the hitting was picking up. And that, that was exactly right. The Gulls have come out this period and started doing some hitting. It remains to be seen if they'll hit consistently through this period because that is definitely a big part of their game to stop this defense of Peoria from just walking out of their end. Got Lambert and Martinson flanking Dugay, two good hitters. Buck behind the Peoria net. McKee lugs it into center ice as he crosses it, drives it in the corner. Burke picked it off there. Fed it in the corner to Gulls captain Alan Heppel swings around as he takes a hard check and a slap by Miam. Buck loose at the other side. Denny Lambert back for it. The Wawa kid shot it out over the line. It came back in on the offside as they are trapped. Alan Heppel shaken up. He got bumped pretty good there, and it's, uh, it's a situation that uh, you have a, a rookie left winger out there in Lambert, and Lambert just left the zone a little too early. Heppel looked up to make a play, but Lambert was so far up there, he was right on top of the defenseman at the blue line, and therefore covered, that took that pass away. Then Heppel had to do a little double clutch there, and you could see uh, that uh, that's why he got lined up and got hit so hard. He, he didn't cough up the puck, which is most important, and that just shows his experience, and one of the reasons he's captain of this team, he does have a good head on his shoulders. And a look at the two benches and a lot less strain on the faces of the Rivermen as they are up 4-1. Monjo, their big uh, playmaker, centers! And it went past the net as Robinson came in deep with a play. Gulls Kavartelnov checked away by Tuttle. Loose at center ice, recovered by Cernick. Shot into the open wing. Ruff chased off. Recovered by Tuttle down the right side into the San Diego corner, trying to come out of front. Good defensive play by Sergei Sturikov, who knocked the puck off his stick. Rink wide pass, special K, Dmitry Kavartilov, left Cernich, screen back, Kavartilov shoots through the crease. And the Rivermen drive it down the ice. Burke has to hustle over there. As Ruff is up there first, would have been an icing if it had gone all the way in. On the far boards, San Diego zone, 15-53 to play. Whitney, oh, play by Monjo. That was a bit of good fortune for him as possibly well as skill because Whitney would have been gone. Down the open side, Mayer back of his own net. Lead pass, Robbie Nichols in a center ice behind Kavartalov. Whitney picked it up, in over the blue line. Controls the MVP in the All-Star game this year in the IHL. Headed for the San Jose Sharks. And down the right side, they, they come with Bass and closing. Try to centering pass and come around to the far boards. Knocked uh, down on the play was Ron Hoover. They battle four of them, tied up in the right corner boards. Derek Martin, the referee, signifies a stop in play. And it's still 4-1, 15-10 to play, and we'll come back after this message. Play is back underway as the goals. Derek Mayer, Dugay is spilled. Derek. Martin says no, he shook his head. No penalty, that is. Left side, Uber, rink wide pass. Hellerin closing, knockdown, crashes into Burke. Against the post, but the big guy is okay. He's up quickly. All Pellerin is looking for is his glove, but that was one of those thrilling rushes to the net. A good aggressive move by Pellerin. He thought he had half a stride on Alan Leggett. So he was going to cut for the net, They're very determined to get to that goal, but Alan Leggett got enough of him to knock him off stride, and he quickly ran out of room. 
and fell to the ice and into to Sean Burke. A lot of folks might be getting their first look at the I tonight, as they call it, the IHL. There's a look at the score in the other game, 4-4, second period, Kalamazoo, Fort Wayne. Kalamazoo had an early lead of 4-1, to one, but Fort Wayne, the East Division champion, has cut them at 4. It's 4-1 here in Peoria, in favor of the hometown Rivermen. Jason Simon over the blue line, but that play is offside. As I was saying, Sandy, a lot of people getting their first look at the IHL must be impressed by the caliber of the play. Oh, yes, I'm sure they are. This is a fast skating league. They move the puck very well. There's some very skilled hockey players here. If you take that to the Monjo line and then the, uh, the Gulls hotline, now being centered by Ray Whitney, some uh, great uh, offensive hockey produced by those two lines. There's the lineup for Friday night, Salt Lake, Kansas City, game one. Milwaukee, Muskegon, game one. Kalamazoo, Fort Ga uh, Wayne, game two. And we'll be here for game two of this series on Friday night. Uh, shot ends up in the corner seats and out of play. Eight of the 10 teams in the IHL for the uninitiated are sponsored. Number one farm teams of NHL clubs, goals, are uh, one of the two independents. The Gulls have done very well this year as an independent, as of course has uh, Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne on top in the east, the Gulls uh, battling it out right down to the wire for second place in the west, just uh, failing to uh, overcome the Rivermen and finishing fourth overall in the league. Gulls get the draw, Mayer shooting high over top the crossbar, recovered by Jason Marshall. Shaken up earlier in the game, has come back to play. Hoover takes his pass, center ice, a lead pass down the boards. But it went by Bassett, ends up on the far side and taken by the Gulls, Larry Floyd. Last year, their MVP and highest point score. Quick pass into the middle, off the mark. Hoover takes over, Ron Duguay, shoe bottom. Meantime, crashing in against the net, and that stops the play. Hasn't come off much tonight. No, it hasn't. In this case, uh, Ron Duguay, trying to get to the front of the net as Larry Floyd crossed the blue line. Ron looking for any rebounds or a tip in or whatever and Shoebottom, a big man, tying him up and steering him towards the back of the net and then into the goal post. His uh, new and future boss is here in the audience tonight. Gulf fans get your playoff tickets tonight. So when the puck drops for game three of the playoff Saturday night, you'll have the seats you want. Call now to see the Gulls battle the defending Turner Cup champion, Peoria Riverman. Ticket prices start at just $7. Call now the Ticketmaster charge line, 278 ticks, 278 ticks. 4-1, Riverman. On they come, Scar Herring went off balance as he came to the line, but tucked it into the corner. Denny Lambert has it, all scoring. In the earlier periods, nothing here in the third as yet. Picked off, the shot by Aru is deflected wide of the San Diego net. Eppel rounds the goal against Miam. Lead pass up the middle, too high for Gretzky. Recovered in center ice by Court Cernich. Shot it to the line, picked off Lambert. Dumps it into the corner. Round the back of his own net for Brian McKee. He turns and slips it over to me and was coming back deep to help out. Lead pass. In pinches uh, Cernich, he fell to the ice, trying to scramble in for that puck. Goes back of the Peoria net, round on the right side. Big collision over there in a pile of players. Rivermen being pressed at the moment, leading 4-1. Now we get a stoppage and we're going to get a penalty as well. A little mix up along the boards there with uh, Alan Heppel. Well, while they settle that matter here in the score 4-1 Peoria, let's take a timeout for this. Ryan McKee for roughing on that play. So the Gulls go on the power play at 6.59 here in the third period. They're 0 for 4 on the power play tonight. Whitney between the Nichols and Kavartelnoff, but it is Ron uh, Rob, Rob Robinson with the puck as he comes out of his own zone. Let's fly into the San Diego corner. Big Sean Burke controls it for Larry Floyd, he's playing one of the points along with Derek Mayer. Lead pass, special K. On to Whitney, almost in a collision there with Nichols. It caused the play to go offside. They were trying for the quick break. 140 left in the penalty to Peoria, 12.41 in the contest. Well, this is a great opportunity for the Gulls to get back into this hockey game. 12.41 remaining. The Gulls, of course, 91 goals this year. This year. There's a man that scored the majority of those 91 power play goals, Dmitry Kovarlov. 25 goals. Do you, you think that uh, 
Uh, Tony Esposito uh, was giving away secrets when he told us what his agent is wants so much money, he's uh, putting him out of range of a lot of clubs interested in him. Sounded like a GM to me. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. I think you're right. They'll, somebody's going to pay. They want that talent. Maybe a whole bunch more Russians coming here next year. We'll see. Steve Petal, San Diego line, fires it into the corner. Their leading goal scorer this year with 43. Gulls, man advantage is a minute 14 left in it. Robbie Nichols, pass try, broken up, shot down the ice into the San Diego zone by Lavoie. Derek Mir darts out in front of his own goal, looking to start the play on the fly, off the stick of Special K. Dmitry Kvartalov sent right back in. Bassett moves in. Burke flipped it over to Mayer coming back. 50 seconds left. San Diego manpower advantage. Now Whitney broken up in center ice by Lavoie. They just dump it in San Diego zone. Bassett chases Floyd to the back of his own net. Puts on the brakes there. 35 seconds left. Gulls need to get something going here. Down 4-1. Whitney through center ice. Chased by Pion. Broken up. At uh, the Peoria blue line by another. Here's Kabartalov in the middle. Getting set. Sarkov shoots. Big save. Oh, boy. A bear came up as the Gulls finally penetrated to the line. The Leggett across to Starikov. The Leggett winds up, takes the shot as the defenseman went down. Now oh, the tip try by Whitney. Sent it over top the crossbar. Gulls have had something going here now. Starikov had to go off the heel of his stick. Penalty just expired. Gulls threatened, but could not get enough shots directed on goal. Back in his own zone, Starikov fired it past McKee to center ice. Martinson coming back toward his own zone, knocked off stride. Linesman has to hop up on the boards, but out of the goal zone. Loose at center ice. Tuttle sent it back to Shoebottom. You think the uh, Rivermen have put a cap on it now? I mean, are they, are they playing just defensive and don't want to take any chances? Oh, they're certainly picking up. They're not going to allow any outnumbered attacks. Tuttle with the puck. Off a stick into his own zone. Ahead to Ruff. That's their production line out there right now. A spinorama move. Darikoff had it briefly. Slid off his stick. Leggett taken out. Monjo gets to the puck. Back to the line to Shoebottom. Shoebottom drove it into the corner. Burke has to come out to help himself. Tuttle. Got a piece of it to Ruff, centered. Darcy Norton deflected it. Dugate trying to get to it ahead of Shoebottom. And does. Shoebottom behind him, though, carries him off into the corner and ties him up. Back to that net, Gulls come up with it again. Simon with the puck trying to center from there. Bottled up. Simon then regains possession. Shoebottom ties him up. Back of the Peoria net. Right out in front, the net is knocked. High, but not off the moorings. Those magnetic posts held good. They work well here at Civic Center Peoria. 9.27 to play. Regulation time, 4-1 Peoria in the lead. Near the Peoria net. Simon had it, lost it. And it is iced by the Rivermen. I think they were feeling some pressure. They certainly were. Gulls had a lot of pressure on in that shift. A little bit scrambly, but nonetheless, they had the pressure on the Rivermen. They were a little unsettled in their own zone. You don't see that too often. Gulls are working. They're, the, the, the E is there. They're not having much success, but they're working. Well, that's, that's very important, though. They're not laying down by any means. They know they're going to have to work. They're going to have to work every shift. But they have a funny look at this. Uh, Funny angle of the net, they're balanced, like yeah. a balance high wire act there. Yeah, basically, I think uh, Shoebottom trying to push his man into the net because they were in a little trouble. He thought maybe by pushing him into the net, the net would get knocked off and therefore a stoppage in play. They may be the all-star magnetic post, a nice and call here against Peoria. Uh, usually when it gets up like that, one or the other comes off. Yeah, we've certainly seen too much of that actually uh, in hockey and we see it uh, quite often in san diego we're still using those old magnetic posts in the ihl the national hockey league has gone to a new system that apparently is working better in the emotional game we're going to have another look uh, at that situation there it is tipped up and it didn't come over i mean the goaltender a bear would have been buried under there <laughs> he'd have been hooked like uh, he'd been gaffed play back underway get back to our point about the uh, fan factor here 
and in San Diego. Dumped up the ice, a race to the puck. Just getting there in time was Cord Cernich. Dumps it out of his own zone. Shot back in, Riverman tag up. Heppel, Heppel near his own net, watched by Miam in front. Cernich off here on the right side. Keith Gretzky moves out. Heppel shot it off the glass, it rolled into center ice, and Simon has it. Three men back. Boy, they're not taking any chances. Playing, dropping their men back. Gretzky comes up with the puck. Nice pass. Moving in. Heppel makes. Comes to the side of the net. Goes round the back of it. Try to jam it out in front. And it was blocked. Oh, boy. Heppel had a good chance there. End of a shift. Long drive wide of the San Diego net. Burke reaches out with a big goal stick and flicks it off to the boards. Out to the line. Hoover down the side. Back of the net. A ruse. Slashing penalty. Coming up against the Gulls, Captain Alan Heppel on the delay. Goal is emptied at the other end. Still have it. A drive by Lavoie. And it is smothered by Simon, who is shaken up. Be a penalty to San Diego. 7.46 left. Third period, 4-1 Riverman right back after this. Just above his glove, in that wrist area, may have been where he was struck by that shot as he blocked the shot to stop play. Alan Heppel being called for a two-minute slashing minor at 12-14 of the period. I don't know if you noticed in that uh, earlier rush or attack by the Gulls, when Alan Heppel walked in all alone, did you see the confidence that the Rivermen have in their goaltender? All they did was basically tie up everyone else. They said, okay, fine, we'll let Heppel take his chances with Hebert. You're on. Our money's on Hebert, that sort of an idea. And they just tied up everyone else. Alan was looking for someone to give it to on the offside, but he just had no one over on the other side of the net to give it to. Now the goals down 4-1, have to kill off a penalty here. Tuttle on the near boards at the line. Rob Robinson back in the corner to rough let goal and fired out of there by Al Leggett out trying to kill off this penalty. Nichols lead. Led the league all season, shorthanded goal was six. He's out there with Duque, Mayer, and on the far side, Leggett. Down the near boards, rough. Chased ahead of him, icing call against the Riverman. A little break for San Diego, a minute half left in that penalty. The fan factor, I wanted to get your comments. Certainly, the Riverman have had it here tonight. We'll have it again Friday, but then the fans in San Diego get their chance Saturday and Monday. That's right, and they've been waiting a while for this. Of course, we've known that these two teams were going to meet in the playoffs for some time. It was a matter of who was going to get the home ice advantage, and that battle, of course, went right down to the last week of play. But now back to San Diego Saturday night, and those fans have been ready, and they'll be pumped up. The owner Fred Comrie has had a lot to do with it. We, if we take a look at Derek Martin, NHL bound, they say, one of the top prospects amongst the officials in the IHL. Well, Derek Martin running an, an official's school up in Minnesota this summer. He's yeah, going to rival the, the official school from uh, Milton, Ontario, run by Bruce Hood for all these years. The official in chief, Brian Lewis, is another of those here. National Hockey League head official. From the faceoff, Fioria zone. Rink wide pass, Steve Tuttle drops it off. Gulls a sh uh, man short. Captain Tuttle now picks up speed, moves it into rough. Back into the corner in the give and go behind the net over to Monjo. Monjo here in the near side. Back to Tuttle, who's knocked down by Leggett. Drop pass. And Miam, uh, excuse me, Lavoie, shot it behind the San Diego net. Leggett gloved it over to Robbie Nichols, the Gulf penalty killer, works it into center ice, sees the opening, backhands it down the ice. 50 seconds left. Peoria power play, they lead 4-1. Six and a half minutes to play. Scarta, left wing pass, over skated by Rupp. Goes back in his own zone to recover it. Drops into Scarta, moving up Darcy Norton, who's now on with Floyd. Bells have changed their unit. Second best in the league in the season play. Alone in front, the shot being saved, Burke. Down goes Burke, and the puck went off to one side. And Darcy Norton waits, and then guns it down the ice. Alberta native, no doubt. A lot of the families watching up that way tonight as well. Six minutes to play. 12 seconds, the goals penalty. Kevin Meehan carrying over San Diego line. Oh, Whitney just cut it off in front of the flying Richard Pion. Down come the goals offside. Whitney in for the pass too early as the penalty expires. 
Oh, Jason Ruff in all alone on Sean Burke on that play as the Gulls defenders all were drawn over to Michelle Monjou just inside the blue line. Heads up play by Monjou who's picked up two assists already tonight as he fed Ruff all alone in front of Burke. Sean Burke with another big save. 46 left as you look at the scoreboard. Regulation time and for our KSDO radio listeners on the broadcast tonight. Sergei Starikov's pass broken up at the Riverman line, recovered by Whitney. Back to his own zone. Comes off to the board past Cernich. His on uh, lead pass behind Kabartalov and now retrieves it. Picks up speed, has to cut off. Quick pass, Martinson shoots. Trying to return the favor as Martinson set him up for San Diego's only goal earlier. The battle for the puck near the Peoria net. Dump it up into center ice. It comes to Starikov, who batted it ahead. Marshall's pass. Aru, two lines, and Cernich knocks down Aru. Players just sort of look each other over as the clock stops. 5-10 to play. Chance to tell you that go fans, your playoff season, or playoff tickets are on sale, so when the puck drops for game three of the playoffs Saturday night, you'll have the seat you want. Call now to see the Gulls battle the defending Turner Cup champion, Peoria Riverman. Ticket prices start at just $7. Call now. The Ticketmaster charge line, 278 ticks. 278 ticks. Well, the Gulls running out of time here. There's still three goals down, 5-10 remaining in the hockey game. But the Gulls certainly want to finish strong regardless of the outcome. Now that the series gets established, uh, I think the Gulls felt they could play Peoria coming into the series, but I think they may, even though they're leading, uh, trailing 4-1, feel even more so that they can do better. And certainly the loss of Lynn Hackborn from about the sixth minute of the second period on has dramatically hurt their cause here tonight. So the guys left have done a good job. But Peoria, a clever hockey club, taking advantage of all their opportunities. At the right point, a shot from there by Jason Marshall, their fine rookie defender. Basson from the other side, sent it behind the net. Burke trapped it there, a big collision. And uh, dumped up near the blue line, and Martinson has it for the goal with Kavartalov. Blue line drop pass, winding up. Kavartalov shot blocked on the way to the net. San Diego's only goal scorer tonight. Chip up into center ice. McKee, Aru, Pellerin, and Tuttle scoring for the Oria. All scores in the first two periods. Derek Mayer brings it in over the line. Try to feed it to Whitney. That hit a skate. Taken back of the net by Robinson. Whitney charges in. There is Flatten, and that'll cause Peoria a penalty with 404 to play. Amazing what will happen if you get in and forecheck strongly. Working hard down in the corner, Lambert and Whitney generate a penalty. And we'll leave you for a moment to score 4-1 in favor of Peoria. Be right back. Looking at Don Waddell and Charlie Simmer, they've got a chance here to capitalize on the extra man. Trying to figure out a solution to their power play woes tonight. They're 0 for 5 on the power play. Rob Robinson, 2 for tripping, gives the goals another opportunity at 15-56. Only goal was an even strength score. Ron Duguay, Kavartelnoff. Robbie Nichols kept in at the line by Ray Whitney, playing the point to Special K. He watched by Scarda, top of the circle, moved in. Now the pass, a return pass, the shot! And it was blocked on the way to the net. They tried that give and go. At the left point, Derek Mayer, watched by Pion to Kavartelnov, fakes the shot, tips it over towards Ron Duguay, comes up the other side, in front, the drive, hammered past the net. And uh, W.W. and Floyd up in Alberta. We're probably pulling for him on that one. Mum and Dan. Here come the goals leading the attack. Derek Mayer to Ron Duguay, who was bumped off the puck as he tried to break in by Ron Hoop. Center ice. Now coming off the bench, Gretzky. Check there, covered by Hoover. Puck inside the Peoria zone. Start a shot at ahead. Three minutes left in the game, 55 in the penalty. Here comes Kavartelnov. Force back to the line. Boy, they're trying to hang on his coattails. Comes through the crease. Right out in front for Whitney. Backhand pass. Too high. Shot to the line and a race to the puck. Pellerin beaten to it by Mayer. Puck exits the playing surface. Well, Dimitri looking for that power play goal. As we've mentioned, 25 on the season. Just too short 
of the record for the IHL held by Dave Tomlinson played right here for Peoria last season traded away in the offseason as uh, we look at Dimitri on the bench uh, puffing and puffing he worked real hard on that shift and basically that was about a, a minute and 20 second shift communication still isn't easy but he understands and he has performed I think tonight I don't know if you noticed on that play, when he took the puck the one time at the blue line, that quick explosive speed that he has is what creates so much of the time for him. He gets the space that he needs to work to look for a pass or the shot. IHL fans, good fortune to watch his debut in North America. This season, next year, he'll be up in the National Hockey League, almost certainly a first-round draft pick. <laughs> well, Mark Stolberger wishing that that is so. Our director here, as the Gulfs move in, Lambert shoots, low, turned away by Hebert. On the far side, corner, back to the line, a chance for Starikov. He passes to Leggett, watch, down the board to Gretzky, diagonal pass, down low, Darcy Norton added, deflect off him, retrieves it. Penalty has expired. Gulls are now no better than even strength and still trailing four to one. Chasing back for a rolling puck, Starikov, Burke came out to trap it for him. Lambert returns inside of his own zone. Lead pass intercepted by Tuttle. Tuttle comes over the line, coming to his off wing. Pass to Ruff, check by Ray Whitney. Whitney trying to pick up speed, now does. Over the blue line, Dugay trying to get that jump was in ahead of the carry. A little mix up in communication there and uh, neither one of those gentlemen speak Russian. Dugay uh, trying to break, figured that uh, maybe he should get the puck there. However, I, I think that uh, Ray had read the play well in that the defenseman just clearly went over to take Duguay out of the play, so lack of timing on the blue line stops the play. Those are not beaten yet, but they have shown determination. They have not uh, caved in after falling behind four, one at 13.51 of the second period. Played the Riverman even here in the third, have had some chances. Series resumes on Friday night. Bon jo into the San Diego zone, winds up, shoots! Oh, a ripper! That grazed the crossbar, shot from the right side, was blocked off the stick of rough. That one took the paint off the crossbar, or at least uh, the heat of the shot. Now Bon jo roughed up by Martinson, then taken out of the play by Heppel. In comes Cernich, tie up another of the Rivermen in the corner, lay his whistle down. What have we got here? Martinson and Ruff. Getting rough. Trying to get a hand free. They're paired off. The linesman back away. Martinson and Ruff. Both have scored. Go to the boards. Get a hand free again. Linesman still can't separate them. They don't want to catch one of those roundhouse shots. Martinson comes over the top. Then goes down. And that allows the linesman to get in between. First outbreak of this sort in a tough spot hockey game. Well, Martinson already being called for the high stick on Monjo down in the corner as he stripped Monjo of his helmet. Came back across in front of the net after the whistle and basically just challenged Jason Ruff to a scrap. And Jason uh, only too happy to oblige him. Pretty even bout. A couple of good shots from either side there on that uh, fisticuffs. The only one we've seen in this hockey game. Prognosticators predict a long series. Tonight would seem to indicate it will and that home ice will be a very big advantage. Yes, I'm sure that uh, home ice will be a factor. Don Waddell figuring that uh, it shouldn't be that much of a factor here, but I think the crowd can really be a factor in, in, in these games. Of course, uh, Peoria with that home ice advantage. Uh, to be Don able Waddell to... uh, a little, uh, little unhappy, I'm sure, on the bench with the uh, the performance tonight, but what the heck, the Rivermen are a sound hockey team. You can't take anything away from them. Teams have a day off tomorrow. The series resumes Friday night. The telecast portion won't start until 5.30 on the San Diego Cable Sports Network, one half hour later than this evening. From the line, start a shot block by Darcy Norton in the final minute. Drive, Burke makes a save. Shot it to the blue line, started down on his knees. Chipped up into center ice. Dugay tried to send Darcy Norton away, but unsuccessfully. Scarter retreats. 45 seconds left. Went back to his own blue line. Passed it across to McKee. 
heat lead pass deflected onto the stick of Darcy Norton. Darcy Norton coming, probably going off in a line change, heads to the box, and back of his own goal, started. Half minute left in this first game. 7.05 KSDO broadcast time for the radio portion on Friday night. Driven in now to the Peoria zone, 20 seconds left. A Bear, who's made many crucial stops in this contest. Now the crowd coming out of their seats. With 10 seconds left, Leggett to flips it up the ice. Garda took over, chased by Gretzky, turned, shot it toward the line. One second, and the game is over. And the goals leaving, and the Rivermen surrounding goaltender Guillebert, who backstopped him to this victory. 